So what I'm going to do now, having made this important distinction between uh, perceptual images and mental images, I'm going to now apply our multiliteracies grammar uh, to, to images. Okay, so uh, one of the propositions we're working with is multiliteracies grammar is we want to build a grammar which works for language and works for images and other things as well, which we're going to get to. But at the moment, I'm just thinking about something that works for uh, that works f that describes meaning in language and also describes meaning in images. Now, what we're doing here is actually saying there are parallels. We are making meanings all the time, and there are a lot of parallels between the way we, we make, make meanings in uh, in in language and in image. Um, and later on, I'm going to say there are also some very important differences, of course. But let's just stick to looking at the parallels for the moment. So. What we can do um, in, in uh, images is we can refer to things. These things might be particular things, uh, the Eiffel Tower. So in a sense, that picture of the Eiffel Tower is like a proper noun. The Eiffel Tower, when I write it down, is a proper noun. And a picture of the Eiffel Tower is the Eiffel Tower. And that picture is, if you like, a kind of proper noun in the, in the way in which it refers to one tower. Um, but also we can have concepts of towers. Um, so for example, uh, we can say there is a thing in the world called towers in general, um, uh, which are common nouns if you like. And we can have a number of towers in the world which look different from each other, because towers do, but they all have certain visual qualities which makes them all towers. They're all tall, they're all pretty well freestanding most of the time, and you know some of them look vaguely similar, but there are also quite a range of differences. But somehow or other, we have a word for tower, which classifies all those things, but we also have a kind of a, a set of visual classifications for towers, which allows them a degree of similarity. So in a sense, what we're doing is um, where the, the, uh, by the way, we might represent that as an icon. Icons uh, are all around us in the world. They're one example of a visual image, and they are absolutely conceptual. So when you see, you know, an icon for, uh, you know, the way to the airport's a little plane, well, you know, it's sort of, a, it's, it's, it's an image which is universal, repeated, um, and, and in a sense it operates uh, the way common nouns do. Um, but also, things have characteristics. The Eiffel Tower is grey. Grey is an adjective. The fact that you, the, the Eiffel Tower in the picture is grey and in reality is grey means that we have a set of qualities which are adjectival, if you like, and those adjectival qualities are written into the image. We also have relations, which is, you know, beside the Eiffel Tower is a tree, right? Um, and the Eiffel Tower has three levels possessives, things like prepositions, things like possessives, all of those relations in the world that appear in language are also constructed in images and we construct them in our perception when we see the world itself. So that's, that's the first of our, uh, you know, our five questions about meaning, our five forms of analysis, our five dimensions of meaning, that's referring to things. What about the second one, which is to dialogue? Well, as it turns out, the picture that I showed you, the Eiffel Tower, didn't have any people in it, but there might have been people in it relating to each other. Um, there is figure and there is ground um, in those things. Uh, um, there, are, there are eye lines, the way people are looking at each other, uh, that's, that's, um, that constructs uh, relationships uh, within, a, within an image. Uh, when there are people involved, but even when there are not people involved, there are people involved, which is the person who took the camera, which is their eye, their angle, and the person viewing the picture. And there are certain forms of engagement which are constructed uh, by that. So in a sense, um, this is like you know, second or third person, it's like a reading position. Um, so in a sense, what we've got is what we do with those interpersonal dialogue things in language also happen in images. The next image is just one one very obvious example, this is an image in the second person. <laughs> so, you know, whereas if I was looking behind his back or he was looking somewhere else, my relationship to him would be kind of a third person relationship to the person in that image. So in other words, what we do in language, we can do in images in these kinds of ways. But to go on now to the next uh, point, the same as language, we do a thing called composition. So in language, what we're doing is we're putting sentences and you know morphemes and paragraphs and all that stuff that I spoke about in the previous set of videos 
we do all that stuff in language, but we also do it in image, which are the picture elements, the tree, the Eiffel Tower, the fog, the framing, um, and in a sense, what we're doing with image making is like syntax. What we do with perception is also like syntax, to be quite frank, um, which is, you know, by looking around a room, we're constructing that meaning and we're building a coherent picture of what we're seeing, which is, if you like, uh, syntactical. We put the pieces together and we make a meaning out of those things. But also, in terms of our fourth um, dimension of meaning and our fourth, fourth question about meaning, this is the idea of to situate. Um, you know, where is the picture? Well, look, you just saw that picture in this video. So in a sense, that picture only makes sense, and it makes pretty strange sense in a way, because I've done this funny deconstruction of a picture. If that was in a tourist brochure or a magazine, the situation would actually mean that that picture is used by you in different ways. But I'm using that picture uh, in a particular way, which is quite unusual. And the meaning of that picture there is situated by all these words and things I'm saying around that picture. But also, um, uh, uh, where is the person? Um, so you know, where where is where uh, where is the picturing happening as well? Which is that picture is a selective view of what's around it in in Paris. Finally, the last one is the thing about intention, the things in purposes. There are purposes in the scene, so one might work, you know, there are certain purposes around building a tower, that tower exists for a reason. You know, there's a funny story about it, you know, people thought it was ugly, people thought it was terrible, it was meant to be temporary, people, you know, you know it was meant to be pulled down after the exhibition that it was built for, um, and there were purposes now, that then there were purposes now, which is it's become a symbol of Paris and France and a whole lot of other things. Um, um, so, but there are also, so there are purposes in the scene, there are purposes in the imaging, which is, you know, I took that photo, and I took that photo because uh, I happened to be in Paris on the 100th anniversary, and I thought the fog and the, the you know, the, the trees, well, it was a winter time, and I thought it was all very beautiful. So I had purposes in taking the picture. Um, and there are also purposes in seeing. So you're watching this video now, which has its own purposes about, you know, listening to me about, about images, um, and you have your purposes. So what we have is a whole pile of complex purposes uh, or intentions that surround that image.